endless dune landscapes and scorching heat. When it comes to the question of the largest dry desert on our planet, there's no way around the gigantic Sahara. With an incredible area of more than 9 million square kilometers, this wasteland in North Africa is about the size of the United States of America. In the general perception, deserts are mainly known for their great heat, but this is only partly true. While the thermometer in the Sahara easily climbs to over 37 degrees Celsius in the summer, the values fall far below freezing in the winter nights. In some parts of this vast desert, only a few millimeters of precipitation fall from the sky in a year, but this wasn't always the case. We now know that a few thousand years ago, the Sahara presented us with a completely different face. However, some mysterious maps shake our picture of the history of the desert. Although they're only a few centuries old, they still show many rivers that meander through the bone-dry sea of sand. But what are these enigmatic images all about? Do we need to rethink the development of the Sahara? Let's take a closer look at this exciting topic together. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the most unbelievable discoveries from the Sahara Desert's past. A flourishing past. Gigantic lakes, green savannas, grazing herds of animals. We no longer associate all of this with the Sahara today. However, if we turn back the wheel of time by a few millennia, we see that the dry desert has had a literally prosperous past. It's now considered certain that the Sahara blossomed three times in the past 200,000 years, and each time for several thousand years. The first phase occurred around 120,000 years ago and lasted around 10,000 years. 50,000 to 45,000 years ago, the dry desert presented itself again in a lush green. The last heyday to date ended around the year 3200 BC. When the wasteland was still a fertile savanna, there were still many hunter-gatherers who eventually began farming and raising livestock. What not everyone knows is that the Sahara used to be adorned with one of the largest lakes in the history of the Earth. This was the so-called Mega Chad, which once had an area of 1.95 million square kilometers. For classification, the Caspian Sea, currently the largest lake on Earth, has an area of 371,000 square kilometers, while Megachad still had an area of 360,000 square kilometers and an average depth of 65 meters 6,000 years ago, it began to dry out more and more in the course of local climate changes. So it happened that 4,000 years ago, the gigantic body of water was divided into three significantly smaller lakes, of which only two still exist today. Of course, the onset of the dry period didn't only affect the waters. The savannas, the animals, and the majority of the human inhabitants also retreated from the ever-expanding arm of the desert. From then on, the peoples who settled in the Sahara in the following centuries were dependent on the oasis economy and trade with other groups. However, in the light of official historiography, a pressing question arises. How is it possible that numerous lakes and rivers still adorn some maps drawn long after the Sahara's last heyday? Mysterious Maps To get closer to this exciting topic, let's first take a look at a rather unknown map. The corresponding object dates back to 1551 and was once owned by King Ludwig II. In the corresponding image, we can see many watercourses that meander from the coast deep inland. However, we look in vain for the corresponding rivers on modern maps. Even more mysterious is the great river that runs straight through the middle of the Sahara. But which river could it be specifically? At first, one might think that we're dealing with the Senegal. However, if we look at the location and course of the river, this assumption seems anything but likely. Anyone who thinks that King Ludwig II's map is a faulty one-off is wrong. The Portuguese cartographer Diogo Homem, who also lived in the 16th century, made a comparable illustration. 
Here too, we find the mighty river that runs from the east of the Sahara across the desert and almost flows into the mighty Nile. But how is it that we know so little about this huge river today? Did the body of water suddenly dry up and then fall completely into oblivion? The maps by the geographer Gerhard Mercator also suggest that the natural face of the Sahara was completely different a few centuries ago than it is today. In addition to the already mentioned river in the desert, we come across another striking detail here. On the map of Mercator, we can see how the Nile branches out and splits in different directions. Today, however, there's no trace of such a course. Undiscovered Secrets now let's turn our attention to the rivers that stretch inland from the coast. We see that numerous settlements and cities were immortalized along these streams. In this regard, it's worth looking at a map made by Petrus Bertius in 1645. The corresponding illustration gives us a more detailed insight into the corresponding watercourses and the villages that were built along the river courses. Another map, published in 1639, also shows the vast network of rivers that cut practically across the Sahara. Which brings us back to our original question. How is it that so many different maps were made that show us such spectacular rivers in the middle of the largest dry desert in the world? If the illustrations actually reflected reality, this would have far-reaching consequences. Thus, long-forgotten civilizations may have existed there that are now completely forgotten. Who knows, maybe the relics of lost ancient peoples are still hiding under the hot desert sand. In fact, large parts of the Western Sahara are largely unexplored archaeologically. In this regard, the researchers suspect that many undiscovered traces of former inhabitants still lie dormant in the desert, which are estimated to be 11,500 years old. The Nabta Playa Plain could offer us an authentic foretaste of those archaeological treasures that have always been waiting to be discovered. The Nabta Playa Flats Located about 100 kilometers west of Abu Simbel in the east of the Sahara, the Nabta Playa Salt Flats embody one of the most fascinating archaeological sites on our globe. Over the years, researchers have managed to unearth countless artifacts from our ancestors that give us a vivid insight into the course of human history. The background as an ancient caravan route, the Nabta Playa was used for many thousands of years. Among other things, the archaeologists recovered 8,000-year-old ceramic fragments here. However, these were not just simply processed everyday objects, but colorful, intricately decorated artifacts. In fact, some discoveries suggest that the inhabitants of the Nabta Playa Plain at the time were socially significantly more organized than the settlers in the Nile Valley. On the other hand, other objects show us which sacred rituals the people performed in the salt flats. So, the sacrifice of cattle was an integral part of cultural life. The animals were then buried in stone chambers. It's possible that the cult later rubbed off on some of the customs of the ancient Egyptians. One of the greatest archaeological attractions of the Nabta Playa Plain is an ancient stone circle. Built near a dry lake, the monument is often referred to as the Stonehenge of the Sahara, a name that's somewhat misleading. The construct in the desert is actually around 1,000 years older than the famous Stone Circle in England. It's one of the oldest known prehistoric observatories. It's very likely that the cluster of megaliths was used for calendrical purposes, such as to determine the summer solstice. That way, people knew when it was time to move to winter quarters. It's commonly assumed that the Nabta Playa Plain represents something like the cradle of many cultural and social achievements. The astronomical calendar development, dairy farming, and the cattle farming could have been transferred from here to many other advanced cultures. Mysterious Stone Structures as briefly mentioned, much of the Western Sahara is still awaiting archaeological exploration. The hundreds of mysterious stone structures that were unearthed there a few years ago showed just how rewarding it can be to investigate these vast tracts of land. 
The fact that the relevant areas have so far only been examined very sparsely is mainly due to the many political and military conflicts that flare up there again and again. The discovery of the countless stone structures therefore seems all the more valuable. These have a wide variety of shapes. While some are reminiscent of crescents, others are circular, straight, or rectangular. Still others have been piled into heaps or present themselves as flat platforms. Taken together, the individual objects form a complex over 600 meters long. However, it's not clear what purpose the different structures once served. Some of them may have functioned as tombstones, at least according to the 1,500-year-old human bones found there. The remarkable find shows us once again how much the face of the Sahara has changed over the centuries. Significantly more animals lived here than today. Among other things, rock drawings of cattle, giraffes, and antelopes have already been discovered there. Water Under the Desert a few years ago, a team of experts made a sensational discovery under the hot desert sand of the Sahara. What seems almost unimaginable in view of the endless dune landscapes could be proven beyond doubt with the help of modern satellite measurements. As it would soon turn out, below the Sahara, there's an abundance of groundwater that's regularly replenished. According to researchers, 1.4 cubic kilometers of new water flows into the underground water system every year. If this continues, it's possible that over the course of many years, rivers may begin to flow through the region once more. Previously, scientists had argued that the accumulations of groundwater in the Sahara were fossil fuels that have practically not received any new inflow in thousands of years. However, we now know that this isn't true. The massive water system extends over a considerable area of more than 1 million square kilometers in the north of the Sahara. In detail, they're estimated to be around 1,300 cubic kilometers of cool water there. This natural water deposit enables, among other things, the existence of flowering oases in the middle of the sandy desert. However, the corresponding groundwater resources have been tapped since the 1960s. Since more water is withdrawn every year than can be formed, many of the natural sources threaten to dry up in the future. Unfortunately, this means that unless locals can find an alternative source of water, it's unlikely that the Sahara will be able to replenish itself in any meaningful way. Furthermore, the locals who currently use this as a water source will eventually be forced to move when the water dries up. Wadi al Hitan. How much the face of the Sahara has changed over the millennia becomes clear to us when we take a look at the Wadi al Hitan. This dry valley in the northern parts of Egypt extends over an area of almost 1,800 square kilometers and is home to one of the most exciting paleontological treasures in history. In fact, the researchers found countless fossils of prehistoric whale species in what is now practically nothing but dust-dry soil. About 40 million years ago, the area was covered by the Tethys Ocean. This vast, gigantic sea eventually disappeared when India and Africa collided with Eurasia. Before that, however, the Tethys Ocean had served as a permanent home for a wide variety of underwater inhabitants. So far, the researchers have succeeded in recovering 250 of these venerable specimens from the Valley of the Whales. More specifically, it contained the fossilized remains of the legendary Dorudan and Basilosaurus. The Basilosaurus, also known as the King Lizard, died out around 35 million years ago, if modern scientific techniques are to be believed. The shape of the imposing body, around 18 meters long, was reminiscent of a terrifying giant snake. In all likelihood, the extinct whale species regularly hunted prehistoric fish and smaller marine mammals. But also, the Dorudan knows how to fascinate us with his unique shape. In fact, it was a direct relative of the king lizard.
However, with a length of no more than 5 meters, these early whales were significantly smaller than their upcoming contemporaries. The fossils found in the Egyptian Sahara are of exceptional importance in the ranks of the researchers because they can be used to observe the ancestry of whales from land animals. According to this, the remains of hind legs can still be seen on the remains of the ancient whales, while the streamlined shape of the body was already perfectly aligned with life in the water. What do you think of the mysterious maps of the Sahara? As always, let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. Finally, why not take a look at the other exciting videos of our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the pictures in the end credits now. Thank you for watching, have a good one, and see you next time.